Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're looking at HD Zero's Race 2 VTX. I'm Jeff with Titan FPV, and you're going to acquire some knowledge today. You're probably asking, Jeff, did you just review the Race 1 VTX for Shark Bite? To answer the question, yeah, I did. But this is the latest offering from HD Zero. Uh, and if you do notice, the branding is different. So this is Fat Shark Shark Bite System. As many of you know, the HD Zero is the manufacturer of SharkBite. So these are cross compatible. It's the same system basically, but this is branded HD Zero. I believe that's due to Fat Shark is pretty much dragging their feet with the SharkBite system. And Carl at DiviMath is pushing forward uh, to get this uh, HD system out to pilots. So we're gonna open this one up today, compare it. Um, most of the components are the same. Uh, it's just the arrangement and the board is smaller. Uh, it's got a better form, a tradi more traditional form factor. Uh, it's gonna fit in rigs without modification, unlike the original Race VTX-1. So let's unbox it and see what we get inside. Another thing to note, uh, the Race VTX-2 is coming in at 69 US dollars versus 89 for the V1. So you are saving about $20. I believe this one's been discontinued there at retailers. Let's open up, see what you get in the box. All right, so as you can see, uh, immediately the form factor is much smaller with the V2. Uh, you do have components, uh, chips moved to the side. I believe that's part of the reasoning there. Um, looks like you do have, this is the plug for the uh, joystick. And this is the plug to do up, uh, firmware updates. You're missing the plug uh, that plugs directly into a UART and your flight controller. Um, that has been replaced uh, for uh, direct solder pads only. And that's the reason why uh, we're saving a lot of space there as well. You still do have the um, tie down spot here for the UFL connection. Uh, as you can see, it's a much smaller form factor than the original VTX. So that's gonna fit in a lot more frames uh, without modification versus the original. Only a select few frames will fit this and uh, it's, a, it's a very tight fit. All right, looks like you've got your gummies. You do have the clamp locked down for the UFL. Uh, you can also use a zip tie. So everything you need to connect this to your uh, flight controller is in the box. I've got the HGLRC Aero 3. It's a three inch uh, racing frame. It's running a 20 by 20 stack. Uh, it's analog. I pulled the stack out just to see how uh, this VTX is gonna fit in frames. As you can see, it will fit between the standoffs. Now I haven't removed the gummies there, so I mean you can obviously lower it down. But uh, to get some perspective on that, you just want to see where the standoffs are here as well as here. Now it does stick out a bit. Um, so if you put the top plate on, um, obviously this is going to sit more flush. So you're going to have to take that into consideration. But um, Like I said, you can look. Like I said, you can lower this down to where you have more clearance. Some of these frames are a bit thinner, but that shouldn't be a problem. Unlikely, if you're racing, you're going to have a flip stick up here, unless you just hit something at a very odd angle. Uh, this should be uh, protected well enough here. 
shouldn't really be an issue with durability. Uh, a lot of racers have been testing this and I believe it's been holding up well. It has all the same features that the original Race VTX has. Uh, the power output hasn't changed. It is 25 milliwatt and 200 milliwatt. It does have smart audio if you want to wire that up. If you don't care about smart audio, you can use uh, shark bite stick commands. There you have it. Um, let's pull this real quick and show you the original one race VTX. And this is where you're going to see where the form factor is going to come in uh, key for the V2. So as you see, this wouldn't even fit in the frame. The, the rear standoffs are hitting here where you mount the UFL. If you even flip this around. It, it's still not going to fit because it won't. it's not going to clear here. You do have a little bit more room here in the front standoffs. But uh, that just you wouldn't be able to run this in this frame. That's a big win for racing. Shark Bite uh, was approved for multi-GP. Uh, Evan Turner, heads up, FPV won the championship recently. Um, and I believe three of the top racers were running Shark Bite or HD Zero. Digital racing is here, guys. So currently the best uh, setup as far as the camera goes for Shark Bite or HD Zero is the Run Cam. HD Zero micro cam. I, like many others, uh, was able to get a pre-order in, but I still have yet to receive my camera. So there's a holdup in customs. Um, I believe the last time I updated was October 23rd. Uh, hopefully that will be resolved and I'll receive my two uh, micro cams. I currently do have the beta camera and it's it's working well. So. I'm not really hurting for that, but if you are new to the system and you're looking at the best image, the HD Zero micro cam is going to be the best. But another player has entered the chat. Foxeer has recently announced their Digisite V3 cam. It's also a micro cam using the larger Sony sensor. And I've seen some footage. Uh, it's looking beautiful as well. I do have one of those on order. Those sold out quickly. The first batch is supposed to be shipping out here within a couple weeks. And I believe it's gonna be a couple months before the second batch ships out. So if you missed out on that one, guys, sorry. You'll just have to wait. So that's the status update with the cams. Hope this video was informative, guys. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and we'll catch you in the next one.